This is Leicester Stories, bringing you reports and discussions from Leicester, where everyone has a story to share. Follow us at leicesterstories.uk, find us on Facebook, or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Lex Stories. Yeah, on the other software, on the other app you can do it now. That's just... It's like I don't really know how to get... Because it feels like it try, moves... Try the rotate and see if it does Oh, rotate. does it? Like, oh, yeah. right. So you can move it slightly. And then does it... Yeah. And I, I kind of end up sitting there, kind of going, "Oh, it's like this," and you're struggling to pull it back. But, yeah. but that's part of the, you know, that, that that sense of authenticity, being a bit of crap about how you use it. Yeah. Because there's an awful lot of um, Instagrammers and YouTubers and everything, and they've become very slick. You know, when YouTube first started, and people so you've completed university yeah, without you, learning anything. You well, did not learn a damn thing. <laughs> so, what tips and advice would you have? for people creating and sharing a bit of video? Um, Hang on, let me just change something first. <laughs> oh, oh, no, because... <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that I'd give to people creating video is, um, well, it depends on the purpose, of course. What, what are you creating video for? Is it for yourself or for other people? You have to appreciate that the people that are, might be consuming your media aren't necessarily the audience. They're just someone who happens to be participating in your creation process. So I would say, as my one tip, my one takeaway, would be that they are not the audience. Whoever's watching it is not the audience. If it's for you, if it's to help you improve skills, if it's for you to do something that's different or that you've never done before to help and aid your learning, then there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to, you know, create something bad. Like, create it for yourself, not for other people. Uh, I guess I'd say, you probably just, just start, I mean, just start doing it. Allow yourself to make mistakes as you're doing it. Nothing's gonna turn out perfect, and worst case scenario is, what you what you end up with is so crap that you don't post it anyway, but start again. I don't know. So I wear glasses most of the time. I usually use the back display for photography as well because of like I have to like position my glasses like that right up next to it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I found really difficult when I was doing my um my third year photography was the half of it was out of focus. <laughs> and so I had to take like a wild wide um, field of view and mm. a wide, not field of view, wide focus range because I was just getting that stuff so out of focus and I have trouble with colour correction as well, I had to get my mum to do the colour correction for me because she's got hyperchromia, she has an extra um, yellow conal rod, I can't remember which mm. and so she's really good at colour definition whereas I'm red green oh, colour blind really? so I, yeah. really struggle. I make people look bright red or like pasty blue and or like people just kind of like blend into the background and stuff and you know it's uh it's not it's not the best look really no, for people that's one of the things that i struggled with as well was the color correction because i'm a bit colorblind too i think it's like browns and greens mm. that i struggle with the definition of so when it, kept, when it came to sorting it out, everything just sort of doesn't look right to everyone else's eye. Why well, eventually gave up on that and just started writing instead. Yeah. <laughs> no, colour, <laughs> no colours to fuck up. It's quite good that, I don't even have to move. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the... So you could, you could just sit and chat with people for a bit and... Um, kind of record it like that it's, yeah. it's very simple isn't it you know it's not um i suppose it's a bit like it might be a bit intimidating to some people to have a kind of naturally flowing conversation while somebody just sits there occasionally moving the phone around but i mean the main issue with that thing is the, the battery life yeah um, so it's um 
once you're in a you know, you, 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 I think you get about 20, I mean, from my experience, you get about 20 minutes out of it. Have you um, ever considered, like, I don't know, like, gonzo um, podcasting? Like, you know, that thing you do on Tuesday, just hide a couple microphones under the table. Yeah. Get everybody but, to sign the releases. But, but it, changes the, uh, it changes the nature of the conversation. And, mm. and the, the acoustics are pretty poor in the in the cafe. I, mean, we, we, I, we, I did bring my podcasting kit with me last week, and it did, we, I didn't have... Because it had been in a bag for 12 months, it, mm. I didn't bring it all. So we just did stuff with handheld uh, mics. But next week, I'll, I'll, bring the, I'll bring the podcasting kit again. We'll record a podcast. We'll oh, have a, uh, a conversation about something. And I'll, I'll put it into the newsletter that we're going to record something. It'll be based around build, build, what, what do we mean by building back better and what mm. the... What the kind of lessons are in terms of how we communicate about this. Yeah, I thought that'd be interesting because before I got involved with you know the the voluntary stuff at, at Money Wise Plus, and even to be fair, a, a, a while into it, I'd never even heard of it. And then somebody says this to I think it was my dad actually says, oh you know there's this 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 big hashtag going around post coronavirus for Leicester Build Back Better. I said, what do you, I've never heard of it. Yeah. And I'm still not entirely sure what it, what it means exactly, but well, I mean, similar similar to <clears throat> to many people, there's a kind of a lot of people hadn't heard of it, and a lot of people were unsure as to to what it was meant to be about. But when I, when you talk to people, say, well, what would you like to see different once we've you know once the pandemic's over? They're kind of like, well, I'd like you know we need to change this and we need to change this. So there's a you know despite what it is, but what's going to, what's interesting is um, the organisations that were most heavily promoting this 12 months ago mm. don't seem to be engaged in the conversation anymore and it's never gone further than it being a, you know it kind of was a, was it was like this impulse to open it up as a wider conversation but it feels like it's been pulled back again yeah. to a, a small discussion between a few people who've already decided what the answers are and it's like because they want to get on and be seen to be putting things in place and you kind of think well that's kind of betrayed the the you know, the way that we should be doing this, mm. um, and it, it it doesn't um, it doesn't feel like they're actually engaged in the process. Because I think that'd be a, a great <coughs> shame after all of this, everything that everybody's been through, if things just go back to normal at the end of it. Yeah. Because I think one of the one of the things I quite like about that build back better slogan is it almost implies like a prior destruction, like a tearing down of everything. It's like during the height of coronavirus, we kind of saw like a glimpse at a radically different way to live our lives and to kind of govern ourselves. But none of it during that crisis was ever kind of seized on as an opportunity to do something about it. It was just sort of everybody was like, okay, let's get, let's grit our teeth, mm -hmm. let's clap for the NHS, let's get through this and let's get back to normal where everything should be. Well, should we should we invite people next week to come and take part in a podcast discussion? So yeah, I think so. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Yeah, okay. and I, I think as well. In part, people thought that building back better meant investment in communities, and they they were kind of like almost sold a sold a puck. They were told that um, just from the sound of it, build back better. It sounds like there's going to be, you know, people in the streets building houses, building, yeah. you know, communities. There's going to be more to your city centre than charity shops, um, like fried food places and coffee shops. Um, and the, you know, businesses would get like an injection of cash like everyone's rent goes but, down but the, 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 the mania that has taken over has been house speculation property speculation yeah not community engagement not community investment and that seems yeah. to be you know kind of when you look at the figures a 200 percent increase in the number of house sales uh, before the end of the um uh, the, the the stamp duty scheme and that's kind of says to me there's not, there's not been a 200 percent increase in mutual aid groups it's not been a two hundred percent increase in support for homeless people, yeah. you know, people on the streets and stuff. It's been, you know, the, what's what's actually driven driving change in our, in a, in in you know in England yeah. is is property speculation. I, I think you're right. There's there's a degree of focus on property and large 
much larger scale infrastructure that goes over the heads of the average person because that's where the money is for the big cats and their mates that's where the money is it's in property it's in you know um the upper management of business it's not you know boots on the ground it's not you know handing out stuff to homeless people and trying to you know help them receive aid it's in like you say property and that large scale trading rather than the small scale and what actually matters and what people actually see on a regular basis I'm pressed up with you <laughs> quite a good little video there This has been Leicester Stories. If you want to find out more, follow us at leicesterstories.uk, find us on Facebook, or check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Lex Stories. <laughs>